any community, any country or organization can actually come up with a project idea. But it has to go through the Green Climate Fund via an accredited entity. So we can look at funding proposals depending on the type of access. Maybe in the region you can already identify which entities we have or you have in your region. For example, in, the, in Asia, we have the Asian Development Bank as a regional direct access entity. And in my country, we have at least two development banks that are already also accredited as direct access entities. So depending on the type of access, whether they are submitted by a direct access entity or an international access entity, the funding proposal differs. We will see how funds are being channeled through these different access entities. So from the Green Climate Fund, the fund flows through either an international direct access entity through a funding proposal, approved funding proposal, or through two direct access entities. There's also another, another route, which is called the enhanced direct access, which can happen either at the international access track or direct access track. So one example of a funding proposal under the enhanced direct access is a funding proposal that was adopted by the board in Antigua and Barbuda. So there was like national facility that was set up by a direct access entity in, in Antigua and Barbuda. And then this facility is disbursing funds to smaller NGOs and smaller local community organizations. Only accredited entities can bring funding proposals within the area of their coverage or operations. For example, the Inter-American Development Bank can only bring funding proposals that are covering, that are within the area of their coverage. So that's first classification in terms of looking at um, funding proposals in the Green Climate Fund. It also depends whether the proposal comes from a public or private uh, entity. So depending on whether they come from come from public entities, for example, a national, the Ministry of Environment or state-owned companies or from private sectors in the business sector. It also depends on the size of funding proposals. The size of funding proposals are also crucial in terms of looking at safeguards and risks that come with them. So for example, for micro funding proposals, this is up to 10 million US dollars and small is between 10 million US dollars to 50 million US dollars. Medium is between 50 million US dollars and 250 million US dollars. And large is 250 million dollars and more or above. Entities are also accredited according to their capacity of disbursing and also managing funds. So an accredited entity who's only accredited for micro projects can only submit funding proposals within that micro scale. And, and as we go higher the ladder, of course, the risk goes higher because it means you have to have necessary fiduciary standards to ensure that you're able to manage funds and also risks that may come with the funding proposals that you're submitting to the Green Climate Fund. Funding proposals can also be classified according to the risk category. And uh, for fund reasons, I categorize them according to colors because in the network of observers of uh, civil society organizations, local communities, and indigenous peoples, these are the observers in the Green Climate Fund. We sort of look at all funding proposals and color code them according to their risk. So if we think it's, it's category C, which is the lowest risk, meaning activities with minimal or no environmental social risks or impacts, we usually call, we call them green. Meanwhile, category B are activities with limited potential or adverse environmental and social risks or impacts that individually or cumulatively are few, generally site-specific, largely reversible, and also there are in-place mitigation actions and easily addressed through mitigation measures. So these are categorized as category B. Category A are activities with potential significant adverse environmental and social risks or impacts that are individually or cumulatively are diverse, irreversible, or unprecedented. That includes, for example, if you are going to relocate, relocate indigenous peoples or communities because of a, of a funding proposal. And the categorization of the project is based on the assessment of the accredited entity of the funding proposal in consultation with 
the Green Climate Fund Secretariat. There's a template of funding proposal and they usually, there's a tick box that says, this is a category A project. And because of these factors, so they're going to, they're going to identify which risks are attached to the project. They also need to put in the template how they are, they are going to mitigate all the risks. Projects can also be classified according to the, to the theme that they're being funded for by the Green Climate Fund. We know that the Green Climate Fund has been set up to support mitigation and adaptation climate actions in developing countries. So some projects can only come as pure 100% adaptation. Some projects can come in as 100% mitigation. But what is tricky is that some funding proposals also come in as cross-cutting, cross-cutting mitigation and cross-cutting adaptation. So, and sometimes our question is that how do we know how much percent is mitigation and how much percent is adaptation in cross-cutting project. Very briefly, I'd like to just show the process of approval and implementation of projects and programs that consists of several stages. So the first one being is the concept note. So the concept note is a document with basic information about a project or an idea or a program that accredited entities, the national designated authorities, or focal points in the country for, for the GCF Secretariat to assess the possibility of approval of the described project and also provide feedback for improvement. This can be uh, submitted not only by accredited entities, but also by national designated authority in, in the countries and focal points. So submission is voluntary on a rolling basis. Anytime you can submit. So there's the funding proposal stage. This and the funding proposal is only submitted by the accredited entities to the GCF Secretariat. So it must be made public and that includes a letter of no objection indicating the approval of the country of a country NDA or, or the focal point. So it has to comply with GCF safeguards and we talk about the uh, important safeguards that are also relevant to indigenous peoples that there should be an information and grievance mechanism to address, to receive and address complaints from people that will be affected, potentially affected by the prog program or, or the project. So that's the funding proposal. And the funding proposal is um, once submitted, the Secretariat, the Independent Technical Advisory Panel, sorry for the very long acronyms, the ITAP, review these proposals, whether they comply with the GCF policies, and that the GCF Secretariat also does, uh, does the same review. And then they recommend for either approval or recommend for approval to, to get to the board or not approved to get to the board. So the next stage will be the approval by the board. So this, the decision is made at a formal meeting of the GCF board. We have not had funding proposals that were approved in between board meetings. The approval should be done within a formal board meeting with the participation of accredited entities and active observers. The board may approve the proposal or reject it, approve it with conditions. So these interventions are joint, uh, jointly by, by the observers, the CSOs, Indigenous Peoples and Local Communities who are observing in the Green Climate Fund. So in this way, our active observers are able to carry the voices of, of Indigenous Peoples and and other stakeholders from the national level. So we usually also call out to our partners and also network from the countries where the funding proposals are coming from and try as much as possible to relay concerns to the board, if any. After the approval of the funding proposal, then clearly articulated legal agree agreements that have to, entities have to go through, which are also the same for funding proposals. So they have legal agreements they signed a funded activity agreement that describes the implementation phase of the project or program. Project or program is monitored until its closure. So during its implementation, the GCF applies an adaptive approach, which means the implementation and design can be adjusted according to changing context. We have the evaluation, learning and closure. After a program or project closes, there's a synthesis that made of lessons learned that can contribute to subsequent GCF investment decision. So what are the challenges and issues around funding proposals? Funding proposals are really long and complex documents, very technical as well. So um, most of them are more than 100 page. They're very long, they're very technical. They're only mostly available in English. They are generally 
published 21 days before the board meeting where their approval will be discussed. For category A, remember category A projects are the high risk projects. They need to publish the environmental and social management plans 120 days before the board meeting starts. And for category B, that's 30 days. They have to publish the, ESA, the ESIA and ESMP at least 30 days before the board meeting occurs. And for category C or projects that are perceived with no low or low risk, they are generally published 21 days, but sometimes they even come by two weeks before the board meeting starts. Sometimes, in, in some cases, the board approves the project and then they call on the CSO active observers to deliver the, the position, which we, we still do. I mean, so just so we put on the record that there's a very, uh, for, for example, up, uh, there's a very strong uh, feeling against the project by the, by the observer.